We usually think of jazz as American music from a black tradition with classics from the last century. On September 23rd, you'll have a chance to hear a whole world of jazz, classic and contemporary, in a free walkable concert along the Charles River Esplanade. The event's being put together by the Celebrity Series of Boston, and joining us in the series is its president and executive director, Gary Dunning. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Gary. I'm glad to be here, Chris. Gary, uh, I guess this is a tribute to the jazz in Boston's history, too. Uh, what about that? Well, certainly, I mean, we, we have been presenting jazz at Celebrity Series for decades, um, and that's been part of our history, but the truth is, Boston as a hometown has a great, rich jazz tradition of performers, of composers, and, um, and we really wanted to find a way to highlight that. Um, and so the idea was, let's get a hundred or so local jazz musicians of all ages, I think our youngest is 15, our oldest is a, a bit older than that, um, and you know, let's also have a theme in the music that is about Boston in one way or another. Um, so we put together a playlist, uh, actually Ken Field, our artistic um, consultant, put together a playlist you know, that uses uh, Boston name things like Boston Back Bay Boogie or Boston Marathon um, or Boston themed inspired Dirty Waters by Ed Cobb, um, uh, certainly uh, Maria from West Side Story by Leonard Bernstein, Sweet Baby James, James Taylor. So the idea is even though those aren't considered jazz classics, um, with this performance, um, all of these different bands, 25 different ensembles, can take that core music and play it in their style of jazz, be it klezmer or swing or Latin or an international mix, or be it uh, four saxophones with a soloist, a solo vocalist, or um, you know, a solo guitarist. I mean, the idea was show the range and variety of musicians in Boston, their quality, show the range and variety that is jazz, um, and put it all together in a single concert. Well, Chris, the, the lesson here is that you could take something like my, my favorite things from The Sound of Music, <laughs> turn it into jazz. And I guess that means if, when you improvise, uh, you create a whole different um, kind of music. I mean, is, isn't this what you're going to be highlighting? Really, I mean, we certainly, we gave, we gave all the musicians the lead charts uh, and then said, but you can go to town with how you want that to, you know, how you want that to sound. But the idea is that since uh, all of these ensembles are going to be playing simultaneously, the same playlist, that as you take your walkable journey, as you walk along, and so you participate in a different way than you normally do in a concert, you, you stroll along and you're kind of on this sonic journey where you're gonna hear a klezmer version of uh, you know, uh, Sound of Music or, or Maria, and then you'll start to hear the next group, which might be doing it with a completely different rhythm, but it's still the same music. Um, and so you, you as an audience member basically can take your own pace, how quickly you wanna go from one piece to the next, you can actually go back and forth uh, and, and jump from different bands. Uh, so it was kind of the, you know, a way of turning a traditional performance on its head and saying, you, the audience member, are actually in charge of your experience by wandering through these different ensembles who are playing in different styles. Um, and you can sort of explore it in 25 different ways. This is being the News, and we're talking with Gary Dunning from the Celebrity Series of Boston. Uh, when I look over uh, the list of performers, I, I remember that uh, you know American jazz went global a hundred years ago, yeah. and now we're sort of bouncing back with all these other kinds of jazz from other parts. where you got gypsies and people from Eastern Europe, uh, and that's in your lineup, isn't it? It is. We have certainly some gypsy bands. We have uh, our youngest performer, Cameron Shaw, is from Bridgewater, who has the Funk Academy ensemble. Uh, we have Eric Hofbrau with a, a solo guitar, uh, the saxophone quartet with a vocal soloist. Uh, Mixla uh, group that came out of Berkeley. And so I do think that you, you're, you're seeing the kind of globalization, as you said, of, of music and of jazz, that uh, both conservatories and musicians are hearing all sorts of styles, and they're not just listening to it, they're absorbing it, and it's influencing their own performance. They want to perform with other performers uh, who have different backgrounds, so then you have this kind of mashup of instruments sometimes that um, I think is making, I mean, it's keeping jazz alive. Um, you know, we all love the classics or Ellington and the standard big bands or uh, the standard piano trio, but um, I think this kind of ensemble mix can really open our eyes to both the music and to what's possible, and it's not. You know, jazz is simply and never has been rigid. Well, one of the groups in the lineup uh, is called uh, Kosek. It sounds like uh, wedding and funerals music from, from Serbia, but, but they're also improvising too, right? They're definitely improvising, and you know, the, again, you're hearing these traditions that came from across the world, 
and some of them are sort of instrument based, you know, heavy and brass in, in that part of the world. Uh, others are more about rhythm. You think Latin and you know, music in a great deal. Uh, but when you sort of put these together, um, you're really going to hear the music in a very different way. And when you put 25 of these ensembles together spread over a couple of miles of the Esplanade, you really can experience, I, I think you can experience music the way you haven't ever seen a performance before. Well, one thing uh, I think many of us are accustomed to with jazz is hearing it indoors and, and, and you having it along the Esplanade. I mean, I mean how's it supposed to work? Well, it's going to be one of our challenges, but we think we have some amplification. So it's not a rock concert where there's big speakers, but certainly instruments like the electric piano or the bass are going to have some amplification. But it's meant to, to really mimic a real acoustical performance. And sure, the wind conditions are going to dictate when you hear and how you hear some of the music. But again, with you being able to walk at your own pace and choose, frankly, choose the way and when and how quickly you start to hear this music, we think it makes you more of a participant in the, in the concert in a, in a very interesting way. Of course, instead of thinking inside the box, you're also trying to meet people where they are or, or where they want to be. And of course, why would they want to be along the Esplanade? Sure. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful setting, and we're thrilled to work with the DCR and the Esplanade um, to really make this happen. And so we think we're going to have a wonderful mix of people who know us and know this project and want to go hear it or really have their jazz uh, favorite they want to go hear, but also I love the phrase encountered art. We're going to have probably a few thousand people who just wanted to go walk for a walk in the Esplanade out and they're going to stumble across a concert and we hope they really like the idea of live performance being part of their daily life uh, because that's what we live for. Well, uh, of course, we should also mention that uh, even after this event, uh, and this is not the first time you've done this, but you're going to have some jazz performers in your series this year too. Uh, we certainly are. Um, uh, Sort of related to that, our first concert of the season is Alan Cumming, um, well known on TV and movies, but he's actually a superb performer and cabaret singer. Um, we have uh, uh, the, the um, uh, Julian Lage trio is coming back, uh, Luciana Souza, again Brazilian, uh, lots of influences there. Um, we have OK Go, the video tour. Uh, so we like to showcase the variety of all the music and all the genres that we present throughout the season, throughout all the venues we perform at. Well, I know we didn't have time to drop all the names in the event on the 23rd, so the, the time and place from exactly? From 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock, uh, on the Esplanade, basically from the Community Boathouse up to the Mass Ave Bridge. It's a two-mile loop. Come and enjoy it. Uh, they'll be playing two sets of music um, and Sunday the 23rd. And our website, www.celebrityseries.org, has all the information on all the lists. Thank you very much for being with us. It's a pleasure. Gary Dunning from the Celebrity Series in Boston.
We definitely believe that lived experience is evidence enough and that goes with the power of storytelling. We really wanted to make sure that these women felt comfortable, that their stories were centralized and humanized and that we were telling who they were in a way that was not filtered, there was no agenda, really was guided questions and, and they talk about a lot more than we can potentially include in the film. But our point was to say, your lived experience is enough and we hear you and we are just asking the questions and we have a camera and a platform to tell your story. And you also have a place where people can see this too, right? Yes. Um, you can visit www.em.vision forward slash community. Thank you very much, Tariana Little and Fatima Dane Kay.